Welcome to The Journey. My name is Jason Hatley. I'm the lead pastor here, and I'm so glad that you're with me today as we wrap up this teaching series called, I Need a Miracle. And we're preparing to turn the corner next week to the kickoff of a new teaching series called Success Secrets. Plus, next weekend is Mother's Day weekend, and we've got a big weekend planned for you. But I'm glad that you're here today because we're wrapping up this series where we've been looking at the miracles of Jesus and talking about how God still works miracles in our lives today. And if you ever feel like you're running out of everything, well, you've made a good choice to be here because today we're going to look at the miracle of Jesus feeding the 5,000. So if you haven't done so already, click that blue button by the live stream player, download your message notes so you can follow along with me today. Now, this idea of running out of what you need. We don't like this at all. We always want to see uh, our cabinets full. We want to make sure that we have everything that we need. But you know, it can be a little stressful sometimes in South Florida if you run out of what you need. So I put together a little top 10 list for us to begin the service today. The top 10 worst things to run out of in South Florida. Here's, here we go. Number 10, gas on the turnpike. Or if you drive a Tesla, battery charge on the turnpike. You know, there's nowhere to get off and get gas or to get a charge if you're on the turnpike. Number nine, friends. In this community, you need good, godly friends. We've talked about that a lot during this teaching series. Number eight, patience. You don't want to run out of patience because people can be difficult down here in South Florida. Have you noticed? And so there's always a line. There's always a difficult person to deal with. Number seven, money. Everything is more expensive in South Florida. Number six, canned food in your hurricane kit. I know we haven't had one in a while, and I pray that it stays that way, but you don't want to be in a place where you don't have those canned beanie weenies in your hurricane kit. Number five, toilet paper. Okay, I think that's true for wherever you live. That's not just a South Florida problem. Number four, flip-flops. I mean, it's a fashion statement to have good flip-flops here in South Florida. Number three, an umbrella during the summer because you know it's going to storm every day. Number two, a sense of humor. You've got to be able to laugh at some of the craziness in your life and some of the chaos and the way people act here in South Florida. But then the number one thing, the number one worst thing to run out of is hope. You need hope every moment of every day in your life. And when you're running on empty and it feels like you're running out of everything, you lose hope. You feel defeated. So let me ask you, what are you running out of today? Maybe you're running out of time. Maybe you need more energy. You need more money. Maybe you need more emotional support. You need more love. Maybe you say, I need more opportunities. I need more friends. I need a job. What is it that you feel like you are running out of today? You see, if any of those is you, then I've got a miracle for you today. You know, other than the resurrection of Jesus, the miracle we're going to look at today is the only miracle of Jesus to be found in all four of the Gospels. And that tells us two important things. One, this miracle left quite an impression on the disciples and the gospel writers, but two, it also shows us that this was a big, big miracle. So let's jump into this story of the miracle of Jesus feeding the 5,000. And we're going to be looking at this in the gospel of Mark, beginning of verse 31. And so let me just begin to set the scene here as we start today. It's been a really busy time for Jesus and his disciples. And Jesus's popularity is rising. He's been traveling. He's been teaching. He's been healing. People are coming from all over around him. People are demanding and wanting things from him. So Jesus and the disciples, they are tired. They are totally exhausted with nothing left in the tank. And so that's where we pick up our story today in verse 31. The scripture begins, Then Jesus said, let's go off by ourselves to a quiet place and rest a while. He said this because there were so many people coming and going that Jesus and his apostles apostles didn't even have time to eat. So they left by boat for a quiet place where they could be alone. So hold your finger right there for just a moment. Jesus knew the disciples were worn out. But not only that, Jesus was tired too. Because remember, even though he's fully God, he's also fully human. So he knows what it feels like to run out of energy, to get tired. He understands what it feels like 
when you are exhausted because he's been there too. And so he knows what it feels like, but he also knows when you are running on empty. And if you're out of energy and strength and don't know how to keep going on in your job or in your marriage or in your major in school and the struggle with your kids, with keeping all of the balls up in the air, with keeping all of the the plates spinning on those sticks without dropping any of them, if that's where you are, Jesus knows. He is aware of your exhaustion. So Jesus and the disciples head out on a boat to go across the Sea of Galilee. Now, the Sea of Galilee is a large freshwater lake in northern Israel, and they do this to go and find a place that's quiet to recuperate. I mean, after all, if you want to rest, you go out on the lake, right? So that's what they're doing. It sounds really nice, but it's not how it works out. Back to the story. Verse 33, but many people recognized them and saw them leaving, and people from many towns ran ahead along the shore and got there ahead of them. So I want you to just put yourself in this moment, okay? I want you to picture this. You are with Jesus and the disciples. You set out on this boat to go across the lake to find a quiet place to rest, but you can see the shoreline, and you see that the people are looking at you, and they recognize that's Jesus, that's the disciples. And so as you're going across the lake to find a quiet place, they're running along the shore. And not only are they running along the shore, but everywhere they go, they're picking up more and more people. They actually get to the destination of where you want to go before you do. And so when you arrive, there's a lot of people waiting on you. Now, this would have been a crowd that numbered in the thousands. I want you to see Jesus' reaction in verse 34. Jesus saw the huge crowd as he stepped from the boat, and he turned around and abandoned them. No, that's not what the Scripture says, is it? No, what does it say? It says that he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. So he began teaching them many things. Now, I don't know about you, But if I was exhausted and I was going across the lake to find a quiet place to rest and I saw a crowd when I got there, the first thing I would say is, "Uh uh-uh, no way, I'm out of here. I'm going to go find another place. Any ordinary person would have abandoned this crowd, but not Jesus. Now, why is that? Because the Scripture says that Jesus had compassion on them because they were like lost sheep without a shepherd. They needed Jesus. And listen, when you are running out of everything, Jesus sees you. And he has compassion on you. And he does not abandon you. And he cares for you like the shepherd cares for the lost sheep. So that's what Jesus does here. Instead of running away like you and I would have done, he begins to teach them many things. In fact, Jesus teaches them all day long. Verse 35, late in the afternoon, his disciples came to him and said, this is a remote place and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go to the nearby farms and villages and buy something to eat. Now, in this moment, we see two very different reactions to human needs. First of all, when the disciples saw that it was getting late and it was dinner time, they began to realize there's a lot of people here. They're all hungry, and we don't have any food. So they tried to just absolve themselves of all responsibility and said, Hey, Jesus, you need to send these people on their way. They need to go meet their needs. They need to go take care of themselves. We're not going to do it. Now, let me make this point. Because sometimes the needs around us are overwhelming, right? I mean, you look and you see it around you here in South Florida. And sometimes we think, you know what? That's not my problem. That's their problem. They need to solve that. But listen, that cannot be the reaction of the church to the people around us in need. We've got to be willing to meet the needs of the people that God puts in our paths. And we see this in Jesus' response, verse 37. But Jesus said, you feed them. So Jesus says to the disciples, and by the way, he says to the church today, it's your responsibility to help meet these needs. Don't abdicate these needs. Don't turn your back on these needs. Don't abandon people around you with needs. You feed them physically, spiritually. You help meet their needs. With what, they ask, the disciples asked, we'd have to work for months to earn enough money to buy food for all these people. And listen, that's oftentimes our response. We look at the needs and we see, 
These needs are too great. There's no way I can meet those needs. Do you see all of the homeless? Do you see all of the lost? Do you see all of the hungry, all of the people with all of these needs? So because we can't meet all the needs, we decide not to meet any need. Now listen to me. Just because you cannot meet every need that comes across your path doesn't mean you can't, doesn't mean you can't meet some of the needs. Doesn't mean you can't meet just one of the needs, the need that's in front of you right now. Now, let me tell you about a need that we just found out about here at The Journey. You know, we've had a long-standing relationship with our friends and partners at Boca Helping Hands. And this week, I received a letter uh, from Bill, who works at Boca Helping Hands, letting us know that they are in desperate need. In fact, just during the pandemic, they reached a spike in the number of groceries that they were providing for families in need, providing over 6,000 bags of groceries back during the pandemic. And you would think that that would have dropped off, but because of inflation and the cost of everything in South Florida, it's only grown. In fact, they let me know in this letter that they are now providing in the first quarter of 2024 over 9,000 bags of groceries to families in need right here in our community. And Bill said, Jason, Will you and the amazing people at The Journey hold a food drive to help us meet these needs? So here's what we're going to do. Beginning next Sunday on Mother's Day, we're going to launch a food drive. It's going to be a three-week food drive, so you can donate canned food and perishable, uh, non-perishable items to this food drive between Sunday, May 12th, and Sunday, May 26th. And you'll be able to bring those here to the Ministry and Worship Center with you when you come to church on the weekends, or you can have it drop shipped from Amazon or Walmart or wherever you would like to our office. But listen, if you would join us in helping to provide food for these families in need, would you check that next step on your connection card that says, send me info about the canned food drive, and I'll get you the details about that this week. You know, you don't always see the needs around you. Sometimes they pop up, and when they do, even though we can't solve every problem and feed every person in our community, we can help feed some people, and we'll have a chance to do that through this food drive, and it makes a difference in their lives. Now, back to the scriptures. Verse 38, how much bread do you have? He asked. Jesus asked them, go and find out. They came back and reported, we have five loaves of bread and two fish. So, Jesus sends the disciples out to figure out how much food they already have. And this is a great lesson, a great teaching for us, because before complaining about what we don't have, it's important that we take stock of what God has already blessed us with. So the disciples, they go out, they look, and they find that there are five loaves of bread. Now, these are not like big loaves, massive loaves of bread like we have today. It was probably more like five uh, dinner rolls, about that size, the size of a dinner roll. And the scripture says that they were barley loaves, so they're not good quality. They're, they're the kind of bread that the poor would eat. And then, in addition to those five dinner rolls, they find two fish. Now, these are not massive, you know, tuna that you would catch out here in the Atlantic. No, they were two sardines. They were very, very small, the kind of uh, food that a child would have in their lunch. So, something small to eat along with these small dinner rolls. And so it wasn't much to work with, but with Jesus, it doesn't take much. He can work a miracle out of just a little. Verse 39, then Jesus told the disciples to have the people sit down in groups on the green grass. So they sat down in groups of 50 or 100. Jesus took the five loaves and two fish, looked up toward heaven, and blessed them. Now, another great lesson for you and I here today. Before you complain about what you don't have, thank God for what you do have for the things he's already blessed you with. And when you thank God for what you have, instead of complaining about what you don't have, God can take that little bit you have and work a miracle and turn it into more. The scripture continues, then breaking the loaves into pieces, he kept giving the bread to the disciples so they could distribute it to the people. He also divided the fish for everyone to share. Now, when you read those words in this miracle story, you cannot help but picture Jesus breaking bread at the Last Supper with his disciples. The fact that Jesus blessed this bread and broke it, that's exactly what he did at the Last Supper with his disciples the night before he died. And maybe the breaking of the bread here in this miracle story was a foreshadowing of that night. You know, by uh, breaking this bread and, and multiplying the fish here, Jesus fed thousands. But by giving his life for us on the cross, 
Jesus brought salvation to the entire world. Verse 42, they all ate as much as they wanted, and afterward the disciples picked up 12 baskets of leftover bread and fish. A total of 5,000 men and their families were fed. So from just five dinner rolls and two sardines, Jesus fed over 5,000, he fed 5,000 men plus their wives and their children. And so maybe eight, 10,000 people were fed through this multiplication miracle. Who knows? And then not only that, there were 12 baskets left over. Now, why 12 baskets left over? Well, because there were 12 disciples. And so Jesus was showing that he was not only meeting the needs of the crowds, but that he could do abundantly more than what we ask or expect or imagine. And he provided for his disciples as well. Absolutely amazing what happens in this miracle. And look, maybe today you feel like those disciples and you see a need around you or you see a need in your own life and you are overwhelmed and you feel like your resources are inadequate. You're running out of energy or money or strength or patience or opportunities or hope and you need a miracle in your life. Well, if that's you today, I want to talk about what to do when you're running out of everything. In your notes, write this down. Here's the first step. When I'm running out of everything, first of all, I recognize that God is all I need. I recognize that God is all I need. When you feel like you're running out of everything, where do you turn to have that need met? Do you turn to a friend, to a family member? Do you just work harder and try to solve that problem yourself, take an extra job? Listen, those are all good things. Uh, there's no problem with that at all. But until you recognize that God is the one who provides for your needs and he is all that you need, none of those other resources are going to fulfill you completely. So turn to the one who can meet your needs. Turn to God. Now, the disciples, they knew this because even though their initial solution to this problem of all of these hungry people was wrong, they still came to Jesus. They didn't have the right idea for how to fix it, but when they came to Jesus, they said, okay, Jesus, what do we need to do here? And Jesus, and sometimes you'll go to Jesus and you'll ask him to meet your needs in a specific way that you think it ought to be met, but Jesus says, well, I'm going to meet that need, but not the way that you think. It's not going to be the, solu the solution that you think is going to happen. I'm going to do it in a way that helps you trust God more and turns other people to God as well. You know, the 23rd Psalm reminds us of why we should turn to God when it feels like we're running out of everything. In fact, let's read Psalm 23 one aloud together. Are you ready? Go. The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. Listen, if the Lord is your shepherd, you will have all that you need because he's the one who can take five loaves and two fish and multiply that into enough food to feed 5,000. He can provide a way when no one or nothing else can. If one door opens God can or closes, God can open another. So my trust is not in my bank account. It's not in my job. It's not in uh, what's in my refrigerator or my cupboards. My trust is in God. And look, the truth is, Sometimes God will allow a deficiency in our lives. Sometimes God allows a deficiency, a shortage of something that you are relying on, maybe relying on more than him, so that you cannot rely on that ultimately for everything you need. And instead, you learn to rely on Jesus instead. And this is, this, this is the truth of this adage it is so powerful. You don't know that God is all you need until God is all you have. And so sometimes God allows you to hit a dead end. He allows you to come to the end of your rope to remind you when you're running out of everything that what you really need is him. And this is such an important principle for your life because sometimes your well will run dry. Sometimes the money will run out. Sometimes the business will stop coming. Sometimes the friends will stop calling. And what are you going to do in that situation? Well, if the Lord is your shepherd, you will discover that God is all that you need in those moments. So when you're running out of everything, recognize God is all you need. Then next, back in your notes, I invite God to teach me through my situation. I invite God to teach me through my situation. You know, God never wastes an obstacle or a problem. 
He can bring purpose out of all of those. And in our story, the disciples saw a problem, but Jesus saw an opportunity to meet needs and glorify God. And this is another important truth because God has something to teach you through whatever shortage you are going through right now as well. James says it this way in James 1, verses 2 through 4. Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. Now take your pen and underline that phrase, opportunity for great joy. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. You see, God can use the troubles you're going through to teach you and grow you and deepen your character. And Jesus used this miracle to prepare his disciples. And maybe he's using this time of you running on empty to prepare you for something that he wants to do in your life as well. You know, some of you are here today and, and you're in a situation and you're not sure uh, where the money is going to come from. You know, the support is not there. The energy is not there. Your health is not there. Something that you relied on is suddenly gone. A job or a relationship, something that brought you joy is now disappointing you. So let me share with you three things, three lessons that God might want to teach you during this time. One of those lessons is to stop depending on something other than God. Stop depending on something other than God. I mean, the first reason God might allow you to run out of something is to keep you from depending on that source instead of on him. So is there anything in your life right now you are depending on more than God? Maybe it's your girlfriend or your boyfriend or your spouse. Maybe it's your plans for the future. Maybe it's your job or your bank account. Those are all good things, but they're not God. And God doesn't want you to rely on them ultimately for all that you need because they can't provide all that you need. And listen, ultimately, all of those things, unfortunately, I hate to tell you, they're unreliable. Because people fail us, jobs end, bank accounts empty, but God can be trusted. God never fails. God's goodness never ends, and his power never runs out. So that may be a lesson God is trying to teach you. Now, another lesson is God may be trying to teach you it's time to make a change. You know, you've been going this path, and it's not working, and it's time to make a change. Maybe you've become so comfortable with where you are that you're not listening to God to make a needed change in your life. And so God is using this shortage to push you out of your comfort zone to show you that you're on the wrong track and you need to make an adjustment for your own good. You know, sometimes what you think is bad, I lost my job or my girlfriend dumped me, could actually be one of the best things to ever happen to you. It could be, you know, the thing that you thought was going to destroy you is actually the thing that strengthens you. So sometimes God allows you to run out because he wants you to make a positive change in your life, and you're not going to make that change until you run out. And then one final lesson God may be trying to teach you is that God has not forgotten you. No matter what you're going through, no matter what your shortage is, you are not alone. God has not forgotten you. He loves you. And so even when you feel forgotten like you don't have enough, pay attention to God's presence and God's love and to what God is doing in your life. He's teaching you to depend on him. He's inviting you to make a change. He's reminding you that he cares about you even in the shortage. And then here's the next step uh, to, for what to do when it feels like you're running out of everything. Back in your notes, I praise God for what he's already given me. I praise God for what he's already given me. <clears throat> so before you fret over what you don't have, take stock of your blessings and what God has already given you. The psalmist says this in Psalm 106, verses 1 through 2. Praise the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His faithful love endures forever. Who can list the glorious miracles of the Lord? Who can ever praise him enough? Now, in our miracle story, the disciples looked past what God had already provided. I mean, after all, what is five loaves and two fish to a crowd of hungry uh, 5,000 people? Uh, but Jesus took the little bit. He took the five loaves. He took the two fish. He thanked God for it, and then that's when the miracle happened. And listen, the same can be true for you as well. God can take the little bit that you have, and the little bit can become more. It can become the source of the miracle you need. Listen, I want you to pause right now, and you may feel alone. You may feel forgotten, but I want you to think, 
Who or what has God already given to you that you could say thank you for? Something or someone. What good thing has God brought into your life? And even though you feel a shortage right now, you could thank God for those good things. Listen, if you start with thankfulness for what you have instead of resentment for what you don't have, that thankfulness is going to lead to the miracle that you need. It's also going to lead to you having more faith and hope and trust in Jesus, because if you praise God for what you have, God will use it, because God specializes in turning a little bit into a lot. And then the next step for what to do when you feel like you're running out of everything, back in your notes, I allow God to use what I have. So not only do I thank God for what I have, but I give it to him, and I say, God, I want you to use what I have. So don't just thank God for it, but give it to him, because until you give it to him, He can't multiply it. Let God take what you have and bring the miracle. When it feels like you're running out of everything, it's natural, right? I mean, it's natural to be protective. It's natural to grasp and grab and hold and say, well, I'm not going to let anyone have this. I've got to keep this for myself. If I don't have it, then I might run out. And God, I'm not even going to give it to you. I need this for me. That's our natural response when we're running out of everything. And you know, in the Gospel of John, we find that the little boy, it was a little boy who provided the five loaves and the two fish. Now, I want you to think about this little boy. What if that child had said, you know, not only are there a lot of people here, and they're all hungry, but if I give Jesus this food, I'm not going to have anything to eat. What if he had said, no, I'm going to keep it for myself? That little boy and all of those people would have missed out on the miracle. And that's the attitude we often display. And that attitude will prevent Jesus from doing that multiplication miracle in your life as well. 2 Corinthians 9, 6 shows us how this works. Paul writes, remember this, a farmer who plants only a few seeds will get a small crop. In other words, if you're stingy with what you have and you're not willing to give that to God, you're not going to see return on that. But the one who plants generously will get a generous crop. And that is the incredible thing about Jesus and generosity. You see, it's when you give it to him that's when it's blessed. It's when you're generous with others that your needs are met. It's when you're generous that God shows up in powerful ways in your life. So what are you holding back from God right now? You say, no, God, you can't have this. I need this for me because you don't think that you will have enough. Listen, because of that, God won't bless it. And listen, maybe money is tight right now for you. And you say, well, Jason, I, I'm not going to. I'm not going to be generous. I'm not going to tithe. I'm running out. I better just hold on tightly to what I have. But God wants to take what you have. If you will give it to Him, He promises to bless it, to bring more abundance into your life. I've seen that happen time and time again in my life and across our ministry here at the Journey. Maybe you're running out of time, and you say, "I don't have time to serve the Lord. I don't have time to get on a ministry team. I don't have time to be in a growth group. But you know what I found? When you trust God with your time, he gives you the time that you need to accomplish his will. You always have enough time to do what God wants you to do. So give God your time. He'll multiply that time. The point is God won't multiply what you withhold. It's in the giving it to him that the miracle of multiplication happens. So what are you holding back from God. Because if you feel like you're running out and you need a miracle, the step to take today is to give it to God and to trust God with it and watch God work the miracle that you need. Then let me give you one final step for what to do when you're running out of everything. I trust God to meet my daily needs. I trust God to meet my daily needs. During these tough times when you're running out of everything, It really is a day-to-day process. And sometimes you get on your knees at the beginning of the day and you say, Lord, uh, it's tough right now. Things are scarce. I don't feel like I have enough, but my hope is in you. My hope is in you. So, God, I thank you for what you've given me, and I trust you to meet my needs today. You know, the people in our story, they didn't have food for that day. Even Jesus and the disciples didn't have food for that day. It took the little boy with the five loaves and two fish. But Jesus took that little bit and he performed a miracle that fed thousands. And today you can trust God with your needs as well. You can trust him today, just one day at a time. Look at Psalm 145, 13 through 17 in your notes. It says, the Lord always keeps his promises. He is gracious 
in all he does. The Lord helps the fallen and lifts those bent beneath their loads. The eyes of all look to you and hope. You can give them, you give them their food as they need it. When you open your hand, you satisfy the hunger and thirst of every living thing. The Lord is righteous in everything he does. He is filled with kindness. Listen, God is righteous and good and kind, and he can provide for you what you need if you will trust him daily for your needs. God promises to meet your needs if you put your trust in him. So what are your greatest needs here today? Where does it feel like you're running out of everything? Listen, God can take that worry and that stress and the anxiety about not having your needs met. And if you will trust Jesus with that need today, he'll turn that into peace and provision in your life. I love this promise from uh, the book of Philippians, chapter 4, verse 19. It's our memory verse for this week, so let's read it aloud together. Are you ready? Go. And this same God who takes care of me will supply all your needs from his glorious riches, which have been given to us in Christ Jesus. Now notice it doesn't say that God might meet your needs or that God will try to meet your needs if he can. No, it says that God will meet your needs from his glorious riches. Listen, that's a promise from God. It's a promise that you can trust because God does not lie. And even though you feel like you're running out, God never runs out. He is more than enough for you. So put your hope and your trust in him today. Now, do you know Jesus as the Savior and leader of your life? If not, I want to help you say yes to him today. In fact, let's bow our heads and let's pray together right now. Heavenly Father, I want to pray for everyone who's a part of this service today and they feel like they're running out of something that they desperately need. Money or time or health or friends or family or energy. God, whatever it may be. As we learn from Jesus' miracle today, God, may we turn to you for what we need. And God, may you provide the miracle Uh, as we do. And then for those of you who are here today and you don't know Jesus, you've never put your trust in him as the savior and leader of your life. Listen, would you do that right now? It's the most important uh, prayer you will ever pray. And it's the greatest need that you will ever have, the spiritual need for salvation. It only comes through Jesus. So would you pray this prayer with me quietly, just in your heart today? Just pray, Heavenly Father, today for the first time, I put my trust in you. I know that I'm not perfect. I've lived apart from you. I've sinned and fallen short. And today I'm believing in Jesus, that he died on the cross for my sins, and that he rose again on the third day so that I could be forgiven and have a home in heaven. Jesus, I invite you to come into my life and forgive me of my sins. I don't want to live apart from you anymore. I want to follow you from this day forward in the fellowship of your church. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. And everyone said, amen.